saw it down a tree and now uh, I'm walking down the hill. Figured I'd do a little podcast. It's Skade Russo with the Majestic Rider. And today I'm going to talk to you about no matter how well the horse is trained, you're usually still going to have some issues with it. Because for it to go well, you need the rider to be well trained and the horse to be well trained. Well, that's if you want it to go great. I guess if you want it to be so-so, then a well trained horse and someone who has a concept of what they're doing. And if you want to have issues, then you get a well trained horse and you have a person who has no idea how to ride or any horsemanship skills or really knows anything about how horses behave and what they do. So, if this doesn't make sense to you, this will probably. If you've ever seen a uh, beautiful musical instrument, we like to use this, this example a lot because you can have a beautiful fine-tuned instrument and you have a fantastic musician and you give it to them, whatever it is, piano, guitar, bass, drums, and you will hear wonderful sound coming through it, even though they may have never used that musical instrument, that exact one before, but they know how to play. They're a drummer or they're a violinist, you know, they've taken many, many lessons, so they're good at their craft. So you can give them any instrument that they've played before and they will make it sound fantastic. That's how it is with riders. You can have a fantastic rider, you give them a horse, and maybe the horse doesn't know everything, but it's a pretty well trained horse, and they will make it look phenomenal. So with the gated horse, they're going to have gait. They're going to get great gates out of it. It's going to be very smooth. They're going to make it look very simple. You're not going to see the maneuvers they're doing, and it's just going to look like the horse is doing it on its own, which it is not. It's the rider that's telling the horse what to do. So the same thing with a musical instrument. I don't know how to play guitar or piano or any of those things. So if you give me one of those things, sure, I can get on and fake it a little bit. You might think I have a clue, but not really. I'm not going to do well and I can't play by ear. I would really need someone to teach me for me to be good at it. So no matter if you gave me a million dollar guitar or violin, I still wouldn't be able to play it well and then it would just sit there because I wouldn't know what to do with it. So I would have to get a teacher, learn how to play it, and then maybe someday I could play it half decent since I'm older to be, you know, extraordinary or a fantastic player, I would have had to probably start when I was younger, but that's something I accept. So even though you might give me the most phenomenal instrument, I'm only ever gonna be able to play it so well. So it's the same with a horse. Even if you get the best horse, you're still going to have some issues with it because you're not going to understand it. You're not going to see the subtleties that a good horseman would because you haven't had the training. And when you ride it, it may not gate like it did for the person who sold it to you because they were a very good rider and they did things you didn't see. They have better time and feel so they can feel when the chain, they can feel when the gate is going to change. They can half halt or shift their body or push the horse over a little bit and then the horse never goes out of gate but you really never see them do those things because it's so subtle you can't catch it and that's because they're a good rider okay now when you buy that horse you have to know that going in that if you haven't taken lessons you really don't understand horses like you should and how horses really behave, not how you want them to behave, but how they behave in nature, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you because even if the horse is well-trained, it might start to take over in time if you don't keep its manners up and you don't keep it in gait and you keep just letting it do what it wants, it's not gonna go well. And then lots of people wanna blame the sellers, but it's not the seller that you should blame, you should blame yourself, okay? So if you're looking in to get a horse, and I tell people this over and over again when I talk to them on the phone, I say, when's the last time you rode? And they go, 30 years ago. And I say, well, you know what? Even though I sell horses, I go, I don't think you should buy a horse yet. I think you should take some lessons, see how your balance is at this point in time so you know what you can handle, 
see how your reaction time is, see what you remember, see if things are the same as they used to be, and then call me up when you're ready. But I go to get a horse when you're not ready, it's guaranteed you're gonna have issues. And most people don't call the trainer until the horse is totally messed up, and then you're gonna need the trainer for actually a longer time, and that's gonna cost more money than if you just had a trainer in the beginning. So my recommendation is this, which most people never ever do, is first you take lessons. You learn how to balance yourself, how to use your hands, your legs, your seat, how to do counter maneuvers for out on the trail in case your horse spins, bucks or rears or spooks. And then also besides learning how to ride in your balance, learn about horses and how to be a good horsewoman or man. Understand that they're prey animals that they have fear and how they react. Remember, they all have a flight instinct and if they can't get away, then they fight. So you wanna know all those things and how to deal with a spooky horse, how to deal with a pushy horse, how to deal with a fearful horse. So if you buy one online and that's what comes, you'll know how to deal with it. So do that all ahead of time and then even maybe lease a horse and make sure you have the time for it and the money to pay for it. That's always a good way to test the waters to see if you're gonna be able to carry this dream out at this point in time. That way, if you're like, oh my God, I can't get there. I only get there once a week, that's just not enough. Then you just continue leasing a horse, don't buy a horse. But if you're like, yeah, I got this. I got enough time, got on my schedule, I can do this, then yes, go ahead and get that horse. When you get that horse, don't bring it home if you're new at this. Everybody wants to bring it home, but it's the biggest mistake people make. If the barn is nearby that you're buying it from, keep it there. Board it there, take lessons, learn how to ride it well, learn how to ride it in the arena and on the trail. And then when you're very confident, then you can take it home. And by then, home will all be set up. And remember when you're new at this, people make mistakes at home. Like horses can't graze all day when it's green grass, they'll get laminitis. So there's things about horse care that you need to know and understand. So once you get the horse, if you keep it at the stable, then you take it home once you're ready. But if you're not gonna do that, say you bought the horse online, so it's coming from Missouri or somewhere else, so you're gonna take it if you can, take it to a boarding stable where there's a trainer, because it's very hard to get trainers to come to your house, especially if they're good ones, they're busy, so why would they come to your house and lose money? You'd rather keep the horse at their stable, pay the board, pay them to ride the horse so they understand the horse as well, and to give you lessons and show you how to have control of that horse, how to handle it, what to do. Make the mistakes there so you have immediate feedback from your trainer on what to do versus taking it home and making mistakes don't even realize you're making mistakes and then you're ruining the horse that then it has to be retrained again so go with a trainer and i would say go with a trainer a whole year if you could keep it at that stable in a year you're going to know a lot and you're going to do pretty well and have less accidents but if you can't then six months and if you can't do that at least three months one month is not going to teach you everything you need to know about that horse, okay? And the mistakes you make can be very dangerous because horses are dangerous. So it's best to be somewhere there's a trainer and also you'll make friends, you'll meet people to ride with so you won't be alone versus taking the horse home, you don't have time to ride it, you're working, you're tired from all the barn chores. And so the horse just sits there for three to six months until summer comes and then you go to ride it and it's crazy and you don't understand why because that's not how horses work, okay? So my advice is take lessons first, lease a horse, then once you get the horse, go to a training stable, stay there as long as you can, and then take it home if you wanna take it home, okay? And then if possible, make friends, join groups, so you have other gated people to ride with. But if you're the only one with a gated horse and everybody else has a, everybody else has a uh, quarter horse or something like that, it can be difficult. I do want to clarify like how many lessons to take because you could board at a stable and take a lesson once every two weeks and that's not going to be enough. Okay, it's better than nothing, but that's not going to be enough. So I want you to think when an actor has to go into a movie and they're going to be riding and they have no idea how to ride. You know how many hours they're spending with the trainer? Usually eight hours a day. Probably three of them are riding and the rest is on the ground learning control and
how to balance themselves and strength exercises and all things of that nature. So when you're at a boarding stable, if you want to get there faster, you can. And it would be best if you took lessons five days a week. You'll improve much, much faster than if you take lessons once a week. Okay. Same thing when the horse comes to your house. If you can have the trainer come every day in the beginning for a couple of weeks, that's going to be much better than if you have them just come out once a week, okay? Because they're going to correct things much faster. So remember, the more time you put in, the faster you'll get there, the faster you'll learn versus taking a lesson once a week or once every couple of weeks. You're not going to learn as fast and you won't remember as much because it's like going to work once a week. Like you get there, you don't remember much. They review things. They teach, try to teach you something new and maybe they can or they can't because you didn't remember the other thing. And so you're just kind of reviewing the same thing. If you want to make progress, put a lot of hours into it and then you'll get there much faster. All right. Hope that helps.